There's a big reason I'm doing a series on Atari. Atari was big in the golden age of science fiction, which is one of my favorite times from history. When I was growing up in the early 90s, everything from that time was still clearly visible. Back to the Future, Aliens, Star Wars, E.T. and so on were still top rentals and part of our childhood and imagination. I didn't live the times when those blockbusters were in cinema, but a part of me always felt like I did somewhat through its legacy clearly present in my early years. My favorite movies are still from that time. My favorite music and art is from that time. And my favorite gaming company is from that time. These are intertwined in an atmosphere that you can't just summarize with a pink grid and cyberpunk aesthetics. Science fiction would stimulate the imagination and the video games of that era needed imagination to be projected on. I always try to envision how it was like for someone playing space invaders or asteroids for the first time not long after seeing Star Wars or Alien in theaters. Today we're looking at the past and future of one of those arcades that seemed intertwined with the sci-fi blockbuster culture of the late 70s and early 80s. Gravatar was a vector style arcade machine by Atari released in arcades in 1982. After huge hits such as Space Invaders, Asteroids and Pac-Man, this machine was more of an acquired taste. The game focused on exploration and gathering supplies, like fuel, so you could stay in the game. The controls were based on thruster movement, a lot like Asteroids, and it took some getting used to. This new style of playing and arcade genre was overshadowed by more easy to pick up and play games. I imagine seeing someone at an arcade playing Gravatar and assuming that person is a hardcore science fiction fan, because this game fits perfectly into that blockbuster sci-fi era. The vector graphics felt futuristic and in my opinion still hold up today. The gameplay was new and challenging, just like some sci-fi challenged intellect. In Gravatar you start in a galaxy with a ship and a certain amount of fuel. You need to travel to different planets and complete different missions. These missions vary from the activation of beacons, to destroying all enemies on the planet or stealing intelligence within a certain time. You need to make sure your ship is refueled by finding fuel on certain planets and basically grabbing onto it with your tractor beam. You have three lives and the idea is obviously to get a high score, but when you finish every planet mission in a galaxy, you will warp to the next one with increasingly difficult planet missions. The game probably gets its name from the gravity being different on some planets, where the gravitational pull will make it hard to maneuver. One technically impressive thing that still immerses me today is the zoom effect you see when you enter a planet's atmosphere and are descending towards the surface. You gotta love that intro screen as well. Not to mention the beautiful artwork on the cabinet and marquee itself. This may be one of the prettier cabinets from that time and it completely falls in line with how Atari went about their art presentation looking at all the beautiful cover art for a lot of 2600 games. When we fast forward to 2022, we notice a slow resurgence of that once great company. With the Recharge series, Atari is hitting some right notes and giving us Atari fans something to bridge the gap between past and present. I'm looking forward to new original IPs, but these Recharge games are a big step in the right direction. Where most recharge games were grid based, here we have an animated background with asteroids, beautiful color palettes and well used silhouettes. 
The ships, enemies and projectiles all have a minimalistic style which has become popular in the indie market and fit well within the envisioned world. Music is a home run again for me. That woman is really killing it with some amazing tunes. I love the Asteroid soundtrack and may like this even more. It all adds to the atmosphere already set by the artwork in connection to science fiction pop culture. It may look simple but I'm completely immersed when playing it. Just like someone in 1982 who hit the arcades after the cinema. Like the original Gravatar, the controls take some getting used to. But in the control lies the big challenge as well, as there are different ways to play the game. You can fly and turn fast, dodging projectiles from cannons while shooting them on the half turn before you activate a beacon, but you can also be calm and calculative. In this calmness lies a big part of the immersion. There is a level in which you have to steal intelligence and basically go through a maze trying not to hit the walls or being hit by lurking cannons. If you get hit twice, it's game over. In quick succession that is. Your shield will recharge a few seconds after the first hit. The physics here work really well and I don't know but there is something so soothing about maneuvering your way through those corridors. You feel weightless like lying in the pool on a hot summer day. But it's not all sunshine though. Just like in the original, some planets have a strong gravitational pull and are more difficult to navigate with the thrusters, pulling you in. The corridor missions on these planets present some serious challenge and are nothing like that pool on a hot summer day at all. You can collect rescue pods for additional points and there are a few power ups like homing missiles or a railgun. Finding these at the right time can get you out of a tight spot. One thing I heard another YouTuber mention and I have to agree with is that the aiming is a little off or just takes some getting used to. I find myself having trouble to line up perfectly for a shot because the joystick turns with large intervals. A little bit more precision would have been nice here but it's not a deal breaker by any means. I am well impressed by this title and if Gravatar is an indication for the quality of the rest of the series, I'm really excited for all that's to come and all that's already been released. It's an excellent update for modern times that stays true to the original game. Every Atari fan should not hesitate to buy this and for every other gamer, this may be a very cool introduction to the world of Atari and the old arcades. A time which I would love to visit and try as much to do so in the future of this series. Thank you guys for watching, stay shiny.